Your merciful love, O Lord, we have received in the midst of your temple. Your praise, O God, like your name, reaches the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with saving justice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You are very welcome to the Mass of the 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, let us acknowledge our failures and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The Spirit came into me and made me stand up, and I heard the Lord speaking to me. He said, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, to the rebels who have turned against me. Till now, they and their ancestors have been in revolt against me. The sons are defiant and obstinate. I am sending you to them to say, The Lord says this, whether they listen or not, this set of rebels shall know that there is a prophet among them. The Word of the Lord. To you have I lifted up my eyes, you who dwell in the heavens, my eyes like the eyes of slaves on the hand of their lords, like the eyes of a servant on the hand of her mistress, so our eyes are on the Lord our God, till he shows his mercy. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. We are filled with contempt. Indeed, all too full is our soul with the scorn of the rich, with the proud man's disdain. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. In view of the extraordinary nature of these revelations, to stop me from getting too proud, I was given a thorn in the flesh, an angel of Satan, to beat me and stop me from getting too proud. About this thing, I have pleaded with the Lord three times for it to leave me, but he has said, My grace is enough for you. My power is at its best in weakness. 
So I shall be very happy to make my weaknesses my special boast so that the power of Christ may stay over me. And that is why I am quite content with my weaknesses and with the insults, hardships, persecutions and agonies I go through for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The word was made flesh and lived among us. And all who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus went to his hometown and his disciples accompanied him. With the coming of the Sabbath, he began teaching in their synagogue, and most of them were astonished when they heard him. They said, Where did the man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been granted him, and these miracles that are worked through him? This is the carpenter, surely, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Josset and Jude and Simon. His sisters too, are they not here with us? and they would not accept him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is only despised in his own country, among his own relations, and in his own house. And he could work no miracle there, though he cured a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. At the beginning of today's gospel we've just heard, the people were captivated by the Lord's teaching, but that soon wears off, because at the end of the passage it says Jesus was amazed at their lack of faith. Now the reputation of Jesus as a preacher and healer was quite well known at this stage. and. When he returned to his hometown, people initially took to him, but then a certain caginess sets in, or takes over. They were wondering where he got all this wisdom and how these miracles had been worked through him. He never went to the rabbinical school like the scribes and Pharisees and chief priests. After all, he was only the local carpenter's son. So what would he know? But their caginess gives way to jealousy. And when this green-eyed monster rears its ugly head, it usually casts a dark shadow over our relationships. It is rightly listed as one of the seven deadly sins. What happened to Jesus of Nazareth turns out to be a kind of a signature tune for the rem remainder of his three-year ministry and his ultimate rejection on the cross. The Gospel tells us later on that it was out of jealousy that they handed him over to be crucified. We could ask ourselves the question, is this sin straining any of our relationships at present? Because if it is, we need to do something about it. But just like the shine was taken from Jesus' visit when he returned to his hometown, a similar thing, I would say, may have happened to St. Paul. During his life, he was given unique spiritual favours which could have made him feel superior to the other apostles and his other peers. But to prevent him from getting too proud, as he says himself, he was given a thorn in the flesh, an angel of Satan, which he pleaded with the Lord to take away, all to no avail, however. His plea was landed on deaf ears. Because, as the reading says, the Lord's power is often at its best in times of weakness, at times like this. Paul then goes on, he changes tack, and he says he's going to make his weaknesses, insults, and hardships his special boast. 
because through them he can feel the protection of Christ's power over him all the more. He's not talking here about his sins, oh no, because we can never boast about our sins. But the angel of Satan could be a person who is consistently undermining him and shaking his confidence. God can use even the sins of our detractors to boost our spiritual growth and lead us to a deeper humility and indeed a greater reliance on God. St. Therese's community in France, there was a nun who wasn't the easiest to live with, but Therese sought out her company more than the other nuns did in the community. Pope Francis said recently, our level of humility will be proportionate to how we react to humiliations or put-downs of one kind or another. So how are we doing in that department? In fact, the people of Nazareth may have done Jesus a favour. They would have helped shatter any illusions he may have had of his ministry being plain sailing and help him to face the ultimate rejection by his own people when they had him crucified. Thorns in the flesh along our road of life can be moments of grace for us too if we look at them in the right way. It will make us humble of heart after the example of our Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. 
Let us pray with confidence to God our Father in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you, says the Lord.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go now in the peace of Christ.